What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. So today I'm gonna to be talking about how to program, how to set up your workouts throughout the week, and how to do this in a strategic fashion that's going to allow you to progress at the core key movements. So as you guys may know, I've been coaching Kelly, Kelly Nicole Fit, and I've been programming her workouts. So I'm going to take you through exactly how I put together her training, exactly why she's doing what she's doing, and you know, taking you through how I started from scratch, to actually building out the workouts throughout the entire week and throughout her, her schedule. So let's get into it. Now, when I first talked to Kelly about doing her workouts, I asked her what, what kind of split she wanted to follow. Did she wanna follow an upper lower? Did she wanna follow a full body? Did she want to follow um, you know, different types of, of things like this? Uh, did she want to follow a push-pull legs? All of that, and so Hor, wow. Her, uh, her, what's the word I'm looking for? So Kelly's preference is to do an upper lower type of split. So we knew we were gonna go with the upper lower. Now after that, the question is what exercises do you really wanna focus on with this training block and make sure you are progressing in? So she told me deadlifts, she told me chin-ups, and she told me front squats and hip thrusts. So making sure you pick two to four movements that you wanna like hone in and focus on is a good way to go about structuring your training. Um, different times of the year should be focused on progressing at different movements in my opinion. At the end of the day, you can only do so many exercises throughout a certain training block. You can only be in the gym for so so many hours a week before you're overtraining, before you're just spinning your wheels. Um, and you can only do so many exercises in that time to complement each other and progress at certain ones. So this is kind of how I go about it. So knowing those three to four exercises are going to be the main ones, I start by writing those down and then writing down other isolations and other sort of fillers, for lack of a better term, that we're also gonna include. So those other exercises are gonna include overhead press, lateral raise, an isolation curl, uh, bench press, a type of row, a dip or a tricep isolation. So I wrote down a big list of the exercises that I thought would both fit with what she wanted to improve on and also complement each other throughout the workout. So what do I mean by complement? Um, for instance, I'll just use an example of doing front squats before a deadlift. You know, a lot of power lifters like to do this just as a warm up because it complements the deadlift. It really engages the core um, and it's a good prep for a deadlift. So knowing that, that's gonna kinda help me start somewhere with all of these exercises and put them into a day of the week schedule. Or in her case, an upper lower schedule that goes by two days training, one day off, repeating. So let's start off by kind of going over how she's going through her, how Kelly's going through her training during the week. Kelly's training an upper body day, a lower body day, taking a rest day. Then she's repeating an upper body day, a lower body day, and taking a rest day. She's repeating this cycle continuously, and this cycle, this training cycle is not dictated by days of the week. It's simply dictated by whatever day in the rotation that she's on. As I'll go through in a second here, she has two upper body days, upper one and upper two. She has four lower body days, so lower one, which is a pre-exhaust day, lower two, which is a compound heavy, and then lower 3A and lower 3B. We're never training more than four to five times in a week. If she needs to take an extra rest day, we'll take an extra rest day, but usually it's upper, lower, off, upper, lower, off, upper, lower, off, which ends up being, I believe, five days a week. As I just said, she has four lower body days. That absolutely does not mean we are doing that in a week time. Now, let's get into the actual workouts themselves. So upper one, we're gonna start with a weighted chin up, doing a reverse pyramid. So warming up properly. Anytime you do a reverse pyramid and start at a heavy working set, whether it be a lower body exercise or an upper body exercise, you wanna make sure that the body is warm. You wanna make sure that you've spent your time doing some exercises to get some blood in the muscle and also prep the central nervous system. So doing a couple sets body weight chin up after a proper warm up, um, doing, doing some weighted chin ups with a low rep range, not to failure, just to kind of prep the nervous system and then starting with the heavier set. So. Kelly did one heavy set here and then a couple back off sets. And then for the next exercise, she has an overhead press. Same thing, reverse pyramid. So starting with a heavy set and then going down in weight. After that, she's got a seated row. We've been doing a traditional pyramid with this. So 15 reps, 12 reps, 10 reps, eight, six to eight for the last one, going a little bit heavier and then doing a drop set on that last set. From there, we're moving to a lateral raise. 
Um, for Kelly's lateral raises, we've been doing a leaning cable side raise. Um, this can be a little bit better on the traps in terms of getting the traps involved at a certain spot. Kelly has some somewhat overdeveloped traps, so we're really trying to kind of train around that and still be able to train her delts in a, in a way that's not going to overtrain the traps. So that's our reasoning for the leaning cable raise. Now, after that, we're gonna move into an isolation curl. So doing a single arm um, bench supported isolation curl. And then we have a rotating finisher on that day. So one week it's going to be push-ups. The next week it's going to be rear delt fly. Or I should say the next workout. So she could end up doing this workout twice in one week depending on how it falls. Um, but like I said, the finisher is on one day, a AMRAP push-up set, and then a couple rear delt flies for the other day. Let's get into the lower body. So we're gonna start with a pre-exhaust day. Pre-exhaust leg day, this is leg day number one after upper body day number one. And we are going to completely pre-exhaust legs, meaning we're doing all isolation movements first. So starting with a seated hamstring curl for four sets, then we're moving into a lying hamstring curl, leg extension, then going into front squats, stiff leg deadlifts, and then calf raises. So all of the exhaustion first, all of the isolations first. Um, before the hamstring curls, I actually have her do adductions and abductions, sort of as part of the warm-up, but it's also so, these are also counted as working sets. After that, it's going to be a rest day, and then going back to upper body and then a lower body. So upper two is going to be a bench day. So reverse pyramid for bench, starting with the heavy top set and then dropping the weight for two to three back offsets. Then we have a barbell row. Now, I do wanna say this kind of brings up a really important part when you're programming and that is recoverability from certain exercises that you're choosing to do. So like I said, one of the main things that Kelly wanted to focus on was deadlifts. Knowing that we're going to have multiple deadlifts multiple times a week, different variations. My concern is other movements that are gonna cause low back fatigue and barbell rows are one of them. Now Kelly has just phenomenal form on her deadlifts and her specifically her bent over rows and she really never complains about low back pain after any of these days of training, but I made sure to be very on top of this the first couple weeks because I needed to know if this was potentially gonna to be too much to the low back and she wasn't gonna be able to recover from it. So that was one of the things that I was asking Kelly consistently throughout the first couple weeks, finding out how her low back was recovering because as we all know, doing, doing you know front squats, doing deadlifts, specifically deadlifts, and then adding in like a bent over row throughout the week, your low back, for most people, your low back's gonna be fatigued. I know me personally, uh, that would be a lot in really pushing it for my recovery for my low back. But it's totally fine for her, and so we're just proceeding with it. It works out fine. Little tangent there, but after the bench barbell rows, we're moving on to tempo pull-ups. So one set of as many reps as possible for a tempo chin-up. Um, it's gonna be a neutral grip, and Th uh, I believe it's two, two to three second hold at the top, three to four second negative going down. After that one set, we move to an assisted pull up. Three sets there, constant tension, and it's really all about form and all about the constant tension and pump. After that movement, we're going to dips. So we have three sets of dips, I believe, three to four sets of dips and then finishing with a cable lat pullover. So short and sweet upper body day number two, very basic training, don't need to do anything crazy. Um, you don't ever need to do anything crazy, but Kelly's body responds very well with her upper body movements and doing the main lifts, you have a bench, you have a bent over row, you have a chin up and pull up, you have dips, you have an overhead press, you have weighted chin ups, you know, and you have some shoulder isolation and bicep isolation in there too. And you're hitting the triceps a lot with the bench and the dips. So, you know, we did originally throw a tricep isolation in there, but it was bothering Kelly's elbow and she feels better with dips. So that's a win-win, honestly, to keep that in there if she's able to recover. We're knocking out everything in only just two days for upper body and then we're rotating continuously through those. After that upper two, we're going to lower two. This is a compound heavy leg day. We're focused on load with almost every single exercise and we are really pushing in a lower rep range for this workout as opposed to the complete opposite with the first leg day, which was a pre-exhaust. So that pre-exhaust consists of classic pyramid sets where you're starting with a heavier weight 
and then you're increasing the load and decreasing the reps as you go on as well as the fact that we're pre-exhausting with isolations first and moving on to compounds which is going to limit us with how heavy we go to compounds but also allows us to get more from the lighter weight and as we've said before as i've said before the most important part of programming is understanding recoverability so if we can get more from less on different days of the week by doing something like a pre-exhaust that is a win-win for a volume uh, a volume standpoint a hypertrophy standpoint and even a strength standpoint all of it goes hand in hand you need a certain amount of volume to progress with your strength and you obviously need a certain amount of volume to progress with hypertrophy and that being said strength also plays a role lower rep ranges i'm not one to program one or the other right i'm i'm a very firm believer that you should utilize all kinds of rep ranges in your split in your training and your programming and that's exactly why we've done this so i'll get back to the leg day two the heavy compound day we're starting with hip thrusts working up to a heavy single of of three to six reps then we have front squats this is going to be a straight set uh, but still in a heavier rep range of, I believe we started at five reps, anywhere from five to eight reps. We're working up throughout the weeks, but also trying to increase load. We're only doing a few working sets with the hip thrust. We're warming up very extensively to get to that top heavy set. So the volume is actually like pretty moderate, somewhat lower on this day, but the load is very heavy. One to two working sets with the hip thrust. Then we have four working sets with the squats, only two working sets with the deadlifts. Um, so that puts us at 10 sets right there and we're already halfway through the workout. Now for the heavy sets of deadlifts, Kelly warms up with two to three warm up sets and then she goes for one set of two to five reps and then a second set of eight to 10 reps. After that, she gets into Nordic hamstring curls for three sets and then reverse hypers for three sets. And with the hypers, we've been adding bands, more and more band tension throughout the weeks and we'll probably add some dumbbells um, to you know, continually progressive overload that exercise. So we've made it through two days, two like pairs of the upper, lower, off, upper, lower, off. We only have two upper days, so now we're gonna return back to the upper one after an off day after that legs two. So we'll do that upper one again, and then from there, now we have our third, we come to our third leg day, 3A. Once again, I encourage you to, um, manipulate different rep ranges with your programming guys so we had the pre-exhaust which is a going to be a traditional pyramid starting high reps going to low reps increasing the load we have a compound heavy day which is um, a thorough warm-up but sort of a lower to moderate volume of only doing a few working sets at a much heavier load and lower rep range and then now we have 3a and 3b for legs which is going to be a very moderate rep range with somewhere in the middle working in really that eight to 12 rep range consistently throughout almost all of the sets of the workout. The hip thrusts on this day are going to be tempo hip thrusts. And we are going to, like I said, work within that kind of 10 rep range throughout every single set. Um, I believe we're doing four sets of 10 here and then one heavy set not to failure, just to touch a heavier load after that. And after those tempo hip thrusts, we're moving to deadlifts. And on this day, Kelly does three sets her first set is six to seven reps, second set is 10 reps, and her third set is 12 reps. So she is doing a reverse pyramid here, but we're starting at a much, much more moderate load than we would on other days with other exercises like the overhead press, the bench, deadlifts on the lower heavy two day. Those are gonna be much heavier in like a three to six rep range. This one we're trying to start in a six to seven rep range. All right, let me check the camera. Holy shit, guys, we're good. All right, we're good. All right, listen, getting into YouTube, I've been notorious for just going on for fucking hours and that shit will be, the battery will be dead or it won't be still recording. Anyway, continuing, where were we? Moderate rep ranges with this workout. Now, after the hip thrust tempo, tempo hip thrust, deadlifts, those three sets, reverse pyramid, more moderate rep range, we're going to deficit reverse lunges originally i wanted to just alternate for really just to spice it up and just switch from dumbbell to barbell but again we've established that kelly's traps are a little overtrained so i don't want her holding heavier weights when she doesn't need to um, so we're sticking with barbell for this movement we're having her step off of two plates performing one side first and then the other side this is done for i believe three sets and then we move on to hyper extensions once again to finish the workout short and sweet very basic we have five exercises in total and that is 3a so after we've gone back through the upper one hit that 3a we have another off day 
then we're going to upper two and then we're back to lower one which is the pre-exhaust dead so i'll continue to sort of like roll you through this so you fully understand um i've already gone over the pre-exhaust day so i won't go over go over it again but as i was saying it would be upper two lower one pre-exhaust off upper one lower two compound heavy off upper two now we're back to lower three so we're going to do three b the only difference between 3A and 3B is that Kelly's starting with deadlifts first on 3B as opposed to hip thrusts on 3A. This is another thing I recommend you doing with your training is starting different workouts with different movements because you're going to, you're just gonna have a different attempt at it, right? It's going to be different with when your body's fresh versus pre-exhausted or even just doing one, one exercise prior to like hip thrusts. So it just gives, gives you a different opportunity to progress with one movement first in the workout as opposed to second. So she's doing everything the same with this workout. That's literally the only difference between 3A and 3B. So starting with those deadlifts, three sets of a moderate weight doing a reverse pyramid, going into tempo hip thrusts after, deficit reverse lunges, and then hyper extensions again to finish. After that, it's an off day and we're just repeating that cycle. So I just wanna reiterate and kind of break it down and dumb it down. Um, for lack of a better term, just so you guys fully understand. It is an upper, lower, off, repeat. Two upper days, three lower body days, but technically there's four lower body days because on that third lower body, it's rotating. There's a 3A and a 3B. Hopefully that makes sense. I think I, I, think I covered everything and kind of pointed out while I was talking you know, why you would want to place things in certain ways. So let, let's talk about the legs a little bit more, right? So you can see that lower one is all pre-exhaust. You're hitting isolations first, and then it's you're finishing with front squats, deadlifts, and calves. Lower two, you're starting with hip thrusts, front squats, deadlifts first. You know, three out of the four lower body days are compound heavy focused, but it's really about the tempo, the rep scheme, and the order that matters here that we're kind of manipulating and changing so that your body is getting um, different stimulus at different times of the workout, like I said. So this is important This is important for you to be able to evenly progress at things, right? So if, if the only exercise you ever cared about progressing with was deadlifts, then you know, you'd probably wanna do deadlifts first for like the majority of your workouts, but that's not the case. We want to see balance with progression with these movements. So strategically altering the rep schemes, strategically altering the placement, um, and then focusing on the recovery. How is the low back recovering since we're doing so many deadlifts? You know, how are the legs recovering since we're hitting legs three times in, in some weeks? All of these things are super, super important. And if I had to break it down to three simple things to look at, look at and be focused on with building a program, number one, what are the main exercises you want to progress with? Number two, how can you place them strategically and still pay attention to, to your recovery and monitor your recovery and make sure that it's not too much? And number three, make sure you're utilizing different rep schemes throughout the week, different order of the exercises in the workout. And that's about it, guys. That's, that's really how to, how to nail down some good programming that you can stick to. And the rule of thumb is that you... I would highly recommend for you to at least stick with something for four weeks before changing it up. But past that, you know, you could go with something for a year. My current training split that I used last year and got in the best shape of my entire life, I did the same workouts for an entire year. So if you are progressing, there's no reason to fix it. There's no reason to change it. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Um, with that being said, just continue to monitor everything. Monitor your progress. Your progress will tell you everything you need to know. All right, that's gonna be it for this video. If you guys have any questions about programming or anything like that, drop them below and I can make another video to help you guys out. But be sure to subscribe to the channel. I'll be dropping videos hopefully on a weekly basis now that my health is feeling better. Let's freaking go, I'm pumped for that. Um, you can apply for coaching at gregcarecoaching.com as well as follow me on Instagram, gcfit. No, GC, I get confused with all that. My, my handle's Greg Care Fit, guys. GregCareCoaching.com, GregCareFit. I'll see you guys next time.